Welcome to Capital Preview, a weekly bipartisan discussion with Iowa legislators about the key issues facing our state. Brought to you by Mediacom. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Capital Preview. Our guest today is Representative Kevin Kester, Republican from Ankeny. Welcome, Kevin. It's good to see you. Good this morning, morning, Bill. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Well, um, Kevin, I, uh, I'm i going to just kind of jump right in here of the things that you're interested in and work on up at the Hill. So why don't you go through education? I know is a big thing for you. I know you're a former educator, a former administrator. So why don't you kind of jump in there and kind of give us a little thumbnail of what's going on? One of the premier pieces of legislation from last session going into this was about school funding and state supplemental aid is the, the formal name for the, the primary school board interest in how the funding works uh, into the future. Fiscal year 17 is on the docket, has been since the second week of session in the Iowa House. We got a, our first bill out related to setting that, that rate. And there are state budget issues that frame how we do that single most expensive or most important bill called state supplemental aid. And mm -hmm. We're less far apart than any time in my eight years of serving there. Instead of starting out at zero and six and, uh, and trying to find the middle ground, we're starting out at two and four. And I, I pray and believe it's going to go up from the 2% that's in the House and um, be something that both House and Senate can find peace about knowing that we've got a budget that's satisfactory. It doesn't spend more than we bring in as we settle on a better number than 2%, which would be the lowest one at this point. Mm -hmm. And now I know another thing, um, as we've talked to different representative senators here on Capitol Previews since we started sure. uh, from the start of the session, that the budget is the big 800-pound uh, gorilla in the room. And can you kind of give us a little bit of a idea of what's going on with the budget process? I, I know last year or last week they were in um, the two groups got together and we're trying to pound out a, a budget so that's key work that's what most Iowans have in mind as to the most significant work we do at, at the Capitol as legislators and uh, I'd much rather talk about fiscal year 18 but we don't get to do that um, but my reason for that I, I defend that by just describing a couple of factors that are key to why fiscal year 17 the one we're setting now that starts this July 1 is most difficult. Um, revenues took a dip. We've had the ag sector really carry Iowa for some time, and that was beautiful. Uh, it's, uh, corn isn't going at 10 cents a bushel, but it's, it's, in, it's in the toilet compared to what we've enjoyed, which has really carried Iowa. So what, what else matters? Well, the, the spending piece has three things that were key into this coming year, starting July 1, we call it fiscal year 17, that are prior commitments. And it's a little bit arrogant, maybe, for a legislature to look into three years ahead and say, we're going to fund this at this level. Mm -hmm. But we've done that on three critical things that all have their third and final year of prior commitments falling into the budget that starts July 1. One of those is relative to schools. The nickname is TLC, not Tender Loving Care, but Teacher Leadership Compensation. And all three of these examples, I'll be real quick, are $50 million ideas. And so the sum of the three is $150 million of prior commitments that fall into the budget year that we're about to enter. That's a lot of money in terms of what little revenue there is to go forward um, that's above and beyond last year. So I'd like people to know that in addition to that education piece, Everyone's familiar with Medicaid if they've been following the news. Mm -hmm. There was a commitment that is in its third and final year, also at approximately that round number of 50 million. And the third one is uh, property tax backfill. So our counties and our cities are relying on the benefits of taxpayer cut, particularly in the commercial area, it promotes jobs. Uh, it's $50 million that needs to be backfilled to our cities and counties mm -hmm. and increase state revenue to make up for decreased property tax that is primi primarily received by the local public sectors, almost zero to the state. So the cuts weren't real hard on the state, therefore we should belly up and help 
with the pain of those cuts. So those three $50 million items add up to $150 million of additional spending before we even started the calculations on this year's budget. And unfortunately, the new revenue was approximately half that number. So it seems like <clears throat> the Medicaid, the federal folks approved that last um, week, correct? Yes. Um, that the state could go and <clears throat> privatize their Medicaid um, program. So, yes. So, I mean, are you positive about that? I mean, do you feel good about that, that the state can do uh, privately uh, what they used to do publicly? Yes. I'm, I'm very convinced that our state is, like almost every other, needing to do something significant about the huge trend, the significant increase, the out of control costs of Medicaid, and yet we've got to find a way that provides services to Iowans. Mm -hmm. And so this model has been very uh, criticized, has had lots of moments of, uh, of um, political battle, and yet I celebrate that we finally get out of the chute. We get to start the process. And until April 1 happens, there was all kinds of guessing and surmising about how it would work. Mm -hmm. And if I were one of those three MCOs, I would um, be very anxious for the start date, but also very unable to tell you exactly how it's going to work until we know we get to start. And I think, don't you think, Kevin, that, that anything new is always looked at with a little, you know, skepticism uh, from the public? I mean, people like status quo, and so I think some of that was just the change. I totally agree. Change is mm -hmm. difficult, and this is needed change. And I anticipate we will find a better allocation, better use of the existing funds to serve Iowans in a way that we find more effective. It won't happen in month number three. It'll take a, it'll take a moment in time, and I'm grateful that all three MCOs are aware they're going to lose money in the first year. Yeah. And they're willing to take that risk, knowing that in the long term, this will work well. Yep. Kevin, uh, um, I think the last thing that we want to approach, I mean, our time is kind of fleeting a little bit, but um, I think people are interested in these public pensions and, and the issues that go along with those. So if you want to kind of jump in that real quick and kind of talk a little bit about the public pension part of, of, of the legislature. Yes, as I read what's happening in the private sector and how things have changed in looking at how do we afford pensions into the future, and as I think about uh, baby boomers, you and I might be in that, in that uh, demographic, and we see a lot of people soon to enter or entering rapidly now into pensions, how does that work into the future without putting uh, the skids to fairness to the next generation? And in that, I've spent a fair amount of time and have much scheduled in the interim to work with, uh, with 411. Because I believe that as we look at the the way that it's calculated in terms of uh, the way who doesn't respect right. our police and right. fire. Right. I'm so grateful for some change in America in terms of how we respect our military and some things that have gone the right direction. But as I looked at the 2008 um, crash of the market and the impact on the funds and how that gets made up, I see that our assumptions on the rate of return for the investments is costing us in what's projected into the future of that fund, as in others, more dramatically there because of how it's um, made up for, how mm. we compensate in the public sector. Mm. Well, thank you. Um, our guest today on Capital Preview has been Representative Kevin Kester from Ankeny. I'm Bill Peard, and join us for another episode of Capital Preview.